Okay, so welcome. This is the Coleman 530, a civilian version of the 520, which we will have a video on. We're going to get it stripped down, clean it up, try to get it running. I have not tried to start it yet. This is an overly complicated set of tools my wife bought me for Christmas, so I thought I should use them. Very nice little set. Make sure when you're working on these stoves to keep track of all your pieces. Go ahead and pull out the pump here. The pump leather actually looks very good. Just needs to be soaked in some oil. I did notice that I believe there's supposed to be some washers underneath these stainless steel screws so I'll get a hold of some of those down the line just taking off the the bell here you can use the tool that comes with the kit for almost everything if you'd like just getting off the generator here with the vaporizer tube. There's your cleaning needle. Just taking off the fuel cap. This piece here, which is the little knob that controls the cleaning needle, is kind of my main problem that I'm going to have to deal with. It is rusted in place and does not want to turn very well. There's our little eccentric block and the cleaning needle. It's a little bit bent and I'll show you guys in a little bit that it does not want to turn. Take off our knob here. Keep track of all these pieces. Now, initially here, I did not take this valve stem out, and we changed that later on. I do pull it out, but initially I thought, well, I'm just going to leave it be, but I decided better of it. I'll go ahead and pull this little stem out of the check valve. If you're going to pull these check valves out, I highly recommend having a specialist tool for it. I did a video on this. This is a tool I bought on eBay. It was about 30 bucks. And it allows you to pull out most of these check valves very easily without stripping anything. It is brass, so very easy to strip. There it is. You'll want to shake it and just see if you can hear that ball shaking. You won't hear it, but it is moving, so it seems to be functioning fine. Just trying to get the last bit of gas out. You never get it. This particular stove had some pretty nasty smelling gas in it when I got it in the mail. We're going to try to get the valve assembly out now just using some soft jaws on my vise here. And this thing gave me a time. A lot of times there'll be some kind of a sealant put there to keep it. You can break that down with some heat. I really didn't want to. Try not to if you can. Decided to get some leather gloves. Thought this is going to give me all the traction I need, and it was a complete fail. But magically, it just popped for me there. And I was able to get it started really good, and then get it up off the vise and easily pull it out. Now, be careful when you pull these out, it's got the pickup tube down there. And I have broken one of those before, so be careful. You can see it's pretty dirty. 
but it's probably going to be functional just fine. Just want to get it out and clean it out. Very typical design there. Valve itself looks good. While I'm working on everything, I'm just going to take this pump leather and I like to soak it in 3-in-1 oil. So it'll take me a good while to get this thing sorted. So probably an hour sitting in there. There's our three piece uh, fuel cap. Now this glass um, cup basically is just what sits inside of my ultrasonic cleaner for small parts that will go right through the mesh. I did not put initially that little valve that controls the cleaning needle in because I knew it would take a little bit of special care and just doing something a little different with it. What I ended up doing was putting it in a vise and spraying it down pretty liberally with evaporust and letting it sit. I didn't know if soaking in evaporust was a good idea so I just let it sit for a while and then I got, yep there I am pointing it out, then I got some pliers and I just turned the dickens out of that thing for like five minutes. And what really changed things is at some point I advanced that screw far enough in and I don't know if something was binding, but it, it stopped binding. So here I take the valve assembly out and give it a good spray with carb cleaner. Make sure you open the valve with your knob before you do that. Just gave this a quick run on a brush. Here I'm just making sure that valve on the pickup or the hole in the pickup tube is, is open before I put things into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, a little tip here, if you guys want to get this three-piece uh, cap apart and it's pretty rusty like mine is, you can see the rust, it is very hard to get it to stop spinning in there. And right there it was just spinning. I didn't get anywhere with it. So you can try some kind of a contraption or just tighten it really down. You can see I even get some pliers here and I tighten this thing down. And then while holding it, this took about 15 minutes. It looks really easy for you guys. It took a solid 15 minutes and I got it out. Very rusty screw. Yes, I was very pleased. Now, this is the first of two miscellaneous O-rings that are just thrown in here. When you pick up a, a stove like this secondhand, you never know what you're going to find. Just clean that out real good. Sometimes, if you're really lucky, these will pop out. But this is basically used to be rubber. Now it's just seriously caked in there. So take it outside, heat it like crazy with a propane torch. And you'll see in a second what it looks like after you did that. This is the pieces coming out of the ultrasonic cleaner. And you can see now that I've thoroughly baked this thing, it just it just disintegrates. You got to get in there and clean it really good. If you're looking for a replacement O-ring, uh, it's an odd shape or odd size, I should say. So I get my stuff at oldcolemanparts.com. No affiliation. But... Uh, it's an easy way to get stuff and it's very reasonably priced. So I'm not cleaning this thing up like crazy. I'm just seeing if it works, to be honest with you. I have not even tried to light it. So before I put a lot of time and effort into really cleaning it up and really making a difference on how it looks and shining it up and getting the buffer out, I want to make sure it works. put this back together. Good tip I saw online. Just put the top on there, screw this on. You want it nice and tight. And then you want to screw your um, 
your screw in nice and tight as well. When you do that, it will, when you take it back off, it will still have some wiggle room, and that's what you need to be able to vent the pressure. Now you can see the spring here. A lot of times these springs kind of lose their memory, so just stretch it out and give it a little bit more life, and that should take care of it. Go, popping it back in there you want to get this nice and tight you don't want to over tighten it just a slight little turn and you're good to go all these pieces most of them are made out of brass so you've got to be careful you can easily strip them now you can use anything you want as a sealant I use this yellow uh, gas line this is basically like Teflon tape but for gas figure it should work it's never caused me a problem before Now you want to line the valve stem 180 degrees away from the fuel cap. And what I do here is I align it 180 degrees from the pump. And I figured that out later, but just kind of going through things. I didn't really realize it at first. So works really well to use a wrench like this. And you can see that I'm saying, all right, 180 degrees, but it actually should be from the from the fuel cap. We use our tool, put our check valve back in, works just fine. Same thing with this, it is brass, and just give it a nice good tighten, and that should be good. Don't have to go to town, don't over torque it at all. Just putting our little stem in there. After a nice long soak, our pump leather is very good. I mean, it looks brand new to me. And this is one of the early pumps, so you do have to put a small screw in there. The newer ones have the little clip that goes from either side. This one is just a little small screw and it is very small. You can see here that I finally have this thing turning and I'm pretty excited about it. it took a while but I did get it. When you install this, I'm just going to get it started, but you need to also install the eccentric um, nut uh, or little, little bar, and you need to get it just in there so that when you turn that little knob, it just slightly moves your, and here I am, here I am noticing, because I have a hard time twisting the thing, I'm noticing that I put it wrong, so there it is. It's 180 degrees away from the fuel cap. Back to just getting this thing to work. And you want to just knock it in there, it just seated right there. So now when I turn it, it's just ever so slightly going up and down and we'll clean the nozzle. Went ahead and took the nozzle off of the vaporizer, took it outside and cleared it real good with some carb cleaner and just put it back on. You can pull out the little mesh that's in there, but I did not. It looked just fine to me. It actually looked really good. Carefully put that back on, watching your cleaning needle, make sure. And just put your nut down and tighten it down. This is where I started to think, you know what, I've come all this way. Why don't I go ahead and take this valve stem out 
and the valve stems are all different almost all of them are different check out um, you see just pulls out right here check out um, classiccampstoves.com you can be a member there and there's awesome posts now looking at it I realize that there is a brass washer that should be on the other side there's a small one on the inside and on the outside there should be a brass washer so I have one from a from another stove and I pop it on there and I'm just so proud of myself because you know I figured it out it was missing that would have been terrible and then I go to put this thing on I'm like man that does not fit and then I look in there and I'm like huh I'll be darned pull this out give a couple wax and there it is there's our brass washer so I still have a spare one I cleaned that one up put my spare one back into my spare parts bin and there we go now we can proceed with putting this back in you do need to push that graphite in the graphite looked fine I did not replace it uh, you can get it started with like a crescent wrench or something and here again I found an o-ring just randomly thrown in there you do not need an o-ring that just shows you that it was leaking because it wasn't put together right and the trick here is to get it tight but not so tight that you can't open the valve anymore so just mess with it I'm just testing here that I can still open the valve and I can I think for the hundredth time it feels like I'm putting the gas cap back on finally starting to put things together and once I get the the bell on I'm gonna I'm gonna test this thing and when you when you when you go to test this thing you take it all apart the first thing you need to do is make sure there's no leaks I mean you could find out the hard way if there's no leaks um, you can pump it up uh, see if it holds pressure which is what I do here I just pump it up and then I open the um, the valve and I can hear gas coming out which is excellent I'm listening but that's not really enough so we take it outside pump it up nice and full and then I'm gonna spray it with some so uh, soapy water or sudsy water it was a very windy day it was somewhat loud there's a business next to us that makes some noise during the day but I did not see or hear any any uh, leaks at all so I went ahead and pumped it up and tried to get it lit and this is where I started to run into the wind and it wants to go but it's just too freaking windy so given the fact that I'm comfortable there's no leaks I went ahead and took it under my carport uh, where I have plenty of room but it's much less windy took a little while to get it going uh, it kept wanting to go out on me which is not uncommon you know these stoves are not perfect they're not modern they're not you know always easy to deal with but after a while it eventually started going and it would stay on for me but it was a struggle eventually I had to turn that knob a lot more than the quarter turn it said and it would allow me to uh, to get it going here's where it finally goes for me and at this point I know I'm pretty good because it will settle itself down over time after it preheats but I was having continued problems with the wind so I eventually decide to get the the top portion back on 
you can see it settled down there pretty nicely it's hard to see because it's daytime but it is a nice blue flame here I am just getting that kind of windscreen area back together just to help me out a little bit I'm not gonna say that it started right up but it only took me about 30 seconds of trying to get it to light back up which is much less than it took originally and since then I'll say that I have uh, got it going several times and have had no issues at all it does take a little while to get you know get things going but once it heats up it really wants to work well for you uh, it's very very much burning straight liquid here at the beginning which is what it's supposed to do and once you get the knob and the valve open correctly and the settings for the uh, cleaning needle where it wants to be it gets to going it really doesn't take very long until we end up with a very nice blue flame i hope you guys enjoyed this video this is the first of many videos like this um, where i take an old stove uh, buy it and before I get it going I will uh, take it apart check everything and make sure that it's working well I don't want to have any explosions any issues and I'd rather do that up front so if you guys like this video uh, make sure you hit the like button make sure you subscribe here to paleo maker MD I'm trying to grow this channel have a lot of fun with it if you want to see more about this stove and other stoves check out my main channel paleo hiker MD I'll leave a link down below and yeah, guys, just check out this awesome blue flame. And thanks for watching.